What a joyful day in the life of the church as these three deacons, Michael, Christopher, and Nicholas, will soon be ordained our newest priests. They have a strong bond and they will add to the beautiful priestly fraternity that is ours here in the Diocese of Arlington. Interestingly, they did their theological training and preparation at three different seminaries. And I was thinking, because all of these seminaries are known for excellence in priestly formation, I was thinking that each one of them, in its own way, points us to someone who will assist these men as they soon go forth as priests. Mount St. Mary Seminary, of course, points us to Mary, the Mother of God. St. Charles Barmeo, holy, faithful priest and bishop, patron of seminarians, inspiration to all. Pontifical North American College Seminary is that reminder that we belong to a, a universal church, always in solidarity with the successor of St. Peter, Pope Francis. However, before we first look at the example and inspiration of Mary and St. Charles Borromeo and Pope Francis, let us reflect upon the miracle that will soon take place. With the laying on of hands and the prayer of ordination, the handing on of the priesthood will be accomplished. And these deacons will be configured forever to the very person of Jesus Christ as his priest. And the prayer of ordination speaks very specifically of what is expected of the priest. He is to be a worthy co-worker with the bishop. He is to preach the gospel. He is to be a faithful steward of the sacred mysteries so that God's people are renewed with the waters of baptism, nourished with the gift of the Holy Eucharist, so that sinners are reconciled and the sick are raised up. Like Mary, I am sure, deacons Michael, Christopher, and Nicholas, you know that it is God in his divine and mysterious plan who has chosen you. As the prophet Isaiah reminded you in our first reading today, you are his anointed ones who will be sent forth to bring his presence into a broken world. And I'm sure that, like Mary, when you first heard that call, you had a sense of confusion and unworthiness. But like her, you surrendered to God's holy will, trusting the promise that with the Lord all things are possible. That is why you were able, just a few moments ago when your name was called, to say present. In a sense, you were echoing Mary's yes. Let it be done to me, Lord, according to your word. So be sure to rely always on Mary's help because that yes has to be renewed every day with a firm resolve to, to live out your promises of respect and obedience, your commitment to the celibate state so you serve the Lord with an undivided help. Always turn to her. You are her sons, and she is your mother, the mother of all priests. And on this day that the church celebrates the solemnity of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we entrust you and your priestly ministry to her care. 
with the prayer that she will watch over you always. If you are going to bring the presence of Jesus into the world, you must do so through the authentic and joyful proclamation of the gospel. St. Charles Barmeo says, apply yourself to this task and do everything necessary so that you do it well, remembering that you first preach with the example of your life. And St. Charles Barmeo adds that in your preaching, in the celebration of the sacraments, Nothing can take place or priority over prayer and meditation. For he says there, we find the strength and grace to bring to birth Christ in ourselves and in others. So the church is counting on you to be faithful to praying the liturgy of the hours, the universal prayer of the church, and to spend time with the Lord each and every day in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. In all reality, that time you spend with the Lord is perhaps the best gift you give to the people you are called to serve. Pope Francis speaks very clearly and directly to priests and bishops on how we most effectively bring the presence of Christ to others. His message is consistent. He tells us that we are to be missionaries of God's divine mercy. We are to go out to the peripheries, to the loss and the disillusion to those who have wandered away from the Lord and his church, assuring them that God and all of us stand ready to welcome them home. He tells us that we are never to grow tired of serving the poor and needy by being with them and providing for their spiritual and material needs. And in his most recent exhortation, rejoice and be glad, he reminds us that holiness is the most attractive face of the church. And that must be reflected in our perseverance, our meekness, our patience, our zeal, and our joy. Deacons Michael and Christopher and Nicholas, so much is expected of you. But believe me, you will never be overwhelmed in your priestly life and ministry if you take to heart the words that Jesus spoke to you on this, the day of your ordination. Remain in my love, and you will produce abundantly and your joy will be complete. Deacons Michael and Christopher and Nicholas, go forth. And in your preaching, in the celebration of the sacraments, through your humble and sacrificial service, and by the example of your life, proclaim to others that in Christ Jesus alone, we have every reason to rejoice and be glad. May that joy be yours today and throughout your priesthood. Amen.